All right, everyone. Welcome to Resin Paper. And um, today I'd like to uh, just discuss briefly the differential diagnosis for crazy paving on high res CT, sort of a continuation of my uh, grand rounds. And you see, uh, there is no animation because this is complete PC based uh, talk. <laughs> <laughs> I lost all my uh, animation upon export to a PowerPoint format. But Dr. LeBron wasn't here to appreciate the effort I put into to transform it into a more simple presentation. Um, so the definition of crazy paving is a scatter or diffuse ground glass attenuation with uh, interlobular and intralobular septal thickening. So as we can see here, you can appreciate the diffuse ground glass uh, attenuation on the right and a scattered area on the left. And here there's basic diffuse intralobular septal thickening and a few definite interlobular septal thickening. And this is, uh, as everyone well known, is initially described in the case of alveolar proteinosis and was thought to be uh, specific to it. And later found out that really it's, uh, it can be uh, demonstrated in multiple disease process. So the differential diagnosis uh, is actually fairly short and uh, include infectious category, neoplastic category, idiopathic inhalation of disease, and synchronous disorders. We'll briefly go into each one of them and show you what uh, they look like. Start with infectious category. I have no idea what this blurry guy is. Oh, blurry guy? <laughs> <laughs> but I figure most of you guys would appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, there's time to catch up. <laughs> so what's pneumocystitis carinae? It is, uh, some people argue it's a unicellular fungus, while other people believe it's a protozoa, but for all intents and purposes, it doesn't really make any difference for us. Uh, most people are basically colonized by H3, so we're all carriers, and uh, they're transform, or, um, transporting us through airborne cysts. And you can see here, the few arrows are pointing at the cyst. That's... Uh, here, the other side, there's a PCP cyst. So the cyst basically attaches on the type 1 pneumocytes and it ruptures and it actually releases multiple of these trophozoids which will basically attach onto the pneumocytes and forms exudates and cause also based on membrane leaks through the cytokines. And here is a picture which demonstrates the trophozoids uh, attaching onto a red blood cell here. So on high rise CT, you see again a scattered ground glass opacification. And the ground glass <laughs> opacification is actually due to a foamy alveolar exudate these uh, uh, trophozoids produces. And there's interlobular septal thickening. And interlobular septal thickening is from basically the edema within the interstitium and the tumor or uh, inflammatory cell infiltrates. And they usually present dry cough dyspnea and low-grade fever. On the chest x-ray, unfortunately, almost 18% of patients will be normal initially, and they will develop uh, a bilateral perihilar reticular and poorly defined ground glass opacification. Within three or four days, they will consolidate. Mm -hmm. So that's that. And neoplastic category. BAC, as we know, is a uh, different diagnosis for um, chronic airspace disease, and uh, it can be subcategorized into a mucinous and non-mucinous type. And the mu mucinous type uh, basically are a bunch of columnar cells which is just out of control producing tons of mucins, and then they can eventually give you the ground glass appearance. And again, this copious clinical presentation of copious pres uh, sputum production is characteristic but uncommon. <coughs> Almost everything else we learn about radiology. And uh, they tend to have a lipidic growth through airways and air spaces with preservation of underlying uh, pulmonary architectures. So here's a histology slide which is, uh, shows you the um, columnar cells lining the ovular walls with extensive exudates lining the, uh, uh, actually filling the airways. So on chest x-ray, you can see you define a consolidation of ground glass opacity. It can be focal or multilobar. Probably huge and not see are occasionally seen. Uh, high-res CT, again, 
the ground glass attenuation is uh, occasional finding. It's not the most common finding. And uh, it reflects low density mucin and the glycoprotein content. And the reticular pattern is, again, basically representing infiltration interstitial by the inflammatory tumor cells. So here you go. This is a, a mucinous BAC. As we can see, you can see the bilateral ground glass opacity. You can see the polygonal shape interlobular septal thickening lining of secondary pulmonary lobules. And you can see the smaller microarticulation that represents the inch um, lobular septal thickening. This is uh, more milder cases. And uh, so now we can start forgetting all the cases we've ever seen that didn't report as BAC, but uh, this, concerning, this was proven BAC eventually. So idiopathic, I don't know if you can see this, is actually the DJ from last the Christmas party. I don't know what he was wearing, but... <laughs> anyway, so the so first we're going to discuss in idiopathic categories of pulmonary alveolar proteinosis. <laughs> it's initially described in 1958. And uh, it has a PS positive ovular proteinaceous material with inflammatory infiltrate in the interstitium. Age group are reported common between 20 <coughs> and 50 years old, but in reality it's very wide. And chest x ray has bilateral symmetrical ovular consolidation uh, in the hilar and parahilar distribution, resembling pulmonary edema. And of course, I don't have an example of that, so we have an example of a reticular path in the lower lung now the parahylar and hylar as uh, they described uh, initially. So on hylar CT, again we have a scattered ground glass opacity which is in this uh, example slightly less prominent as compared to the interlobular and intralobular septal lines. Again, if I can show you briefly all the interlobular septal thickenings with underlying intralobular lines within the uh, secondary pulmonary lobules. And of course, uh, it's a diagnosis impossible to make, so you can kick back and let the uh, respirologist do the BAL and uh, mm -hmm. make diagnosis. <coughs> so the next is alveolar sarcoidosis, and this subtype of sarcoidosis in terms of uh, radiographic appearance. And uh, this case is a 25-year-old uh, asymptomatic patient, and basically high-res CT shows, again, bilateral ground glass opacity and the interlobular, interlobular lines. I'm hoping to show you enough that uh, you burn that picture into your mind. But I also want to remind you that that's certainly not a typical presentation of sarcoidosis. And the most typical sarcoidosis is a peribronchovascular nodules, as you see here. Once you see this, you can almost be happy to call that sarcoidosis. So the next goes on to nonspecific interstitial pneumonia. If you remember from two weeks back, they're basically used to be same called UIP, and a few years back they split that from that because they had better prognosis. And the chest actually finding against bilateral airspace opacities. And uh, the differentiation between that and IPF is, first of all, they have very few honeycombings. And uh, their most common finding is actually ground glass opacity instead of the interlocker septal thickening and the subplural basal pattern that you see in IPF. And uh, here we go. This is another example in an 80-year-old guy with uh, severe dyspnea. And uh, what we see is a bilateral in the basal area, more confluent this time, ground glass attenuations with inter- and intralobular lines. And there's some, a few areas of bronchiectasis in here. So the next goes on to cryptogenic organism pneumonia, which is BOOP. And uh, so this is a little bit more histology, talk about the focal plaques of granulation tissues, what's called a mason body, in the distal small airways extending into ovular space with foamy macrophage and interstitial cellular response, and in most cases are idiopathic. So the association certainly has been reported in the collagen vascular disease as we talked about two weeks ago in rheumatoid arthritis and other mixed connective tissue disorders. Infection, certainly drugs can cause boop, and I was just reviewing the literature on my paper and I on there's one report of a boop in that too. So, and actually the example I showed before was a, an amiodarone induced uh, boop actually, or the one I was about to show you. 
Uh, the chest X-ray again shows uh, scattered asymmetric consolidation, predominantly in the periphery. On high-res CT, they tend to have a peribronchovascular and subcortical consolidation as well. Again, crazy decay pattern is uncommon, so that wouldn't be the first thing you think about. And this is a case of boop. Again, this is uh, a diagnosis not made by us. Eventually, it's really clinical response to steroid treatment or lung biopsies to make that diagnosis. And inhalational. Yeah, I can't find anything about other inhalational things. So, lipopneumonia. And uh, it's really pretty simple. Lipopneumonia caused by chronic aspiration of animal, vegetable, or petrosal and base oil fat. So, fat pneumonia. Histopathologically, the ovule is filled with macrophages containing abundant cytoplasmic lipoprotein, and there's an abundant infiltrate ovular wall and interlobular septa. And uh, so by now, you really think, okay, there's really nothing that strange about interlobular septal thickening. It's either infiltration by the edema or infiltration by tumor cells or infiltration by inflammatory cells. It's something that infiltrating it. Okay, and a pulmonary fibrosis can eventually result if it is not uh, treated. And predisposing factor, it could be any factor, esophageal, pharyngeal disorder, predisposed to aspiration, neurological disorder, predisposed to aspiration, other chronic illness. Chest actually finding, again, it's non-specific. You get bilateral lower, low air space and interstitial pass as you expected from aspiration. And uh, poorly defined mass like lesion can be seen sometimes. On high rise CT, really the Clue here is the low density airspace opacity, which is in the range of minus 35 to minus 75, and due to lipid content, as you can uh, expect it. So again, the true diagnosis can be difficult. Uh, and it requires a combination of uh, respirology and uh, biopsy from pathology for that. So last, bring us to the sanguineous disorders, where ARDS is probably what we see most. And by that, uh, you can almost see in the crazy pain, pain pattern we probably can see most in pulmonary edema as uh, everyday um, practice. And, uh, and ARDS really is just another form of pulmonary edema where there is refractory hypoxia and respiratory stress. So it's not a really a radiographic diagnosis, but more a combination between uh, uh, our typical radiograph findings and the impaired DLCO on clinical PFTs and the reduced compliance on lungs. And aside from ARDS, uh, pulmonary hemorrhage syndrome, which there's a fairly long list, anywhere between Wagner's good pastures and et cetera, et cetera, can cause, as you can imagine, as blood leaks into the alveolar space, a growing glass opacity. So this brings us back to the list again, the different diagnosis of crazy pavings. Again, infectious PCP, as you you can see, a bilateral parahylar disease of ground glass attenuation with interlobulin and intralogic septal thickening, and that's more common in the initial presentation. Eventually, it will consolidate. And uh, a mucinous BAC occasionally can give you that appearance as well, and it's not the most common. The most common, again, are airspace consolidations with aerobronchograms simulating chronic airspace disease. And the PAP, the initial process where crazy paving is uh, described, certainly would be, has a good appearance for that. Again, very uncommon. We probably have a few patients floating around in the hospital, which comes in once a while. And sarcoidosis is the alveolar type of sarcoidosis, which gives you the appearance of crazy pain. And now this interstitial pneumonia, where you probably see a little bit more crazy pain because 80% of the presentation are ground glass opacities with some interlobular septal and interlobular septal thickening, where honeycombing is very uh, infrequent. And cryptoagonizing pneumonia, again, an uncommon presentation of crazy pavement. And inhalation of lipo pneumonia, and again, sanguinous disorder that we just discussed. That's it. Any questions?